first day in Mostar, first few hours. Just found the nearest mosque during Maghrib, inshallah. The prayer was great and I've already made two friends, two Bosnians, young as me, who were amazed that there's a Slovak Muslim and they were like super happy about this. So inshallah, alhamdulillah, all praises for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Hey guys, we're in beautiful Mostar and cross you can see there and there's a church and there's a plenty of churches here so pretty cool stuff but also you have mosques nice mix of cultures this is Mostar look how beautiful it is sorry you have a church right behind the mosque and the cross on top of the hill beautiful nature sort of reminds me of Turkey because the mountains are slightly dusty or like uh, they are not full of forests as you see in Sarajevo which is more like Slovakia I would say that part of Bosnia because it's more like Central Europe and this kind of looks like already southern you know some Greek island or something like that so it's beautiful mix and Bosnia is lucky to have this Beautiful mosque. Time for Dur. Beautiful mosque. Just prayed. Dur. Got my Tespi. And yeah, it's really nice. Perfect thing is our restaurant is right like right over here so I can pray and do all sorts of things in Bosnia. Behind me you have the bridge, the most famous bridge, which was repaired after the war. Check it out. It's really amazing. It's very hot here. Compared to Sarajevo, it's like 23, 24 degrees Celsius. So we're sweating. We were on Stari Most, old bridge which was blown up and restored. Look how steep it goes. Guys, check it out. I'm in front of the church. You can see this tall ass building. Giant. Never seen such a big church before. And this is the church, the actual church, I guess. But they are separated. That's crazy. Yeah. So, what's beautiful is that the mosque behind me is just right here next to my apartment. You can see the building. Some of them are like after the war the sniper tower another one is like tear down but most of most are actually looks pretty cool like it's a very cool city full of european tourists much more than in sarajevo sarajevo is very muslim this be very muslim and most are not much like you can see the cross behind me and a giant church and so it's like catholic uh, Cro croats are here so not every meat you find is halal but most of course i would say most is and you see muslims everywhere here it's just sarajevo is 90 percent muslim so it's a different vibe there but mostar is cool city because you have like more like a mediterranean feel the mosques here are five six hundred years old so some of them have been built in 1555 or something like that which is almost 500 years ago and the churches are actually built after the mosques and 
So you see, Islam allows for religious flexibility if this is a mixed land, of course. So this is a mixed land, this is not just fully Muslim, there are Croats and Serbs. So yeah, everybody can have their own thing if you want. SubhanAllah, what's the issue? <laughs> you know, like Islam protects my religious minorities better than liberalism because it allows them to practice. They just can't convert the Muslims to their religion, which is a good deal. If you live under a Muslim government, you can't convert the Muslims, but you can practice your own thing, you, your children, everything. You can have your Christian faith, your Christian beliefs, your Jewish beliefs. No one will attack you, no one will try to convert you. You just do pay jizya and you, you know, respect the Muslim sort of Sharia, but you have your own Sharia, you have your own Kurds. Hey, most Christians would prefer to live in that land rather than in this secular liberalism where they are persecuted for their beliefs and ridiculed. So, good deal for all. So I'm like. Everybody, we're in Krivi Most, which is a great bridge from the 15th century or 16th in Mostar. Look how beautiful the city is, it's amazing. But I've just met a guy, maybe he's watching this video, a brother, and he and I've got I'm very excited because after almost two years, well, year and a half, I have a new prayer rug. And it's very soft and comfy, so can't wait to pray my salah on this. And yeah, excited for this. The best rugs in the game. We are on top of Mosta. You can sit here, and they'll they'll throw you to Mosta. That's crazy. Who would do this? Insane people. Look out, guys. And finally, to say goodbye, we have our blessed sheep. Think I can go close? Nice. That's beautiful. They're making out. That's haram. Look at these horses. Oh, the cops are here. Look at the flag, Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's a made up flag. This flag was, it's not representing everybody, but I mean, it is what it is. They gotta live with it because they have three ethnic groups in this nation. Did you guys see that guy? He just ziplined from here. To there. <laughs> That's insane. It's insane. Zip line. You can see the line goes from here to there. It's pretty crazy. It's a crazy person. Zip line. There's nothing below this. Just this thing, so. Oh, you can see the floor here. Oh, man. Wow. I can see below. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Wow. That's crazy, guy. Look. Look below. Standing on the glass. Nice. I'm not kind of. This is, doesn't bother me, but I, I don't like planes that much. None of them I used to like them. Subhanallah. Look, this is the Mostar. Oh yeah. This is Mostar. Wow. <coughs> it's unfortunate that the sun is here, so you can't see everything in its beauty. It would be better maybe on 
uh, the sunshine, but Maghrib time. But look, B I H, Bosnia and Herzegovina, big cross. This way is Croatia. This way is Sarajevo, I think, the mountains. Yeah. Beautiful country. I guess people, they're looking for that adrenaline rush. That's something to be excited about. And some people are adrenaline junkies, so they, they look for that feeling when they're on the zip line. Because that's when they live, that's when they truly are alive. Because, why? Because it's right there on the edge between life and death. And at least, you know, you're risking your life, so it's kind of exciting. But uh, otherwise your life is boring. And so you're looking for these excitement, thrills. need that if you have Islam, if you have Allah. So that's all I have to say. But if you do, do it. It's cool. Kravica. <laughs> Check it out guys. We're on top of Kravica waterfall, the biggest one. Can't see everything but there's a big waterfall down there. But it all starts with this small river. We just spent 15 minutes walking. Pretty. Not that impressive to be honest, but Mala Kravica. We are in Dervish House and Blagaj. It's really beautiful here. Yeah. The water. And now we have this. Some person used to live here. He used to chill here. This is the, the house. It's like Sirzi's house, but in this, and then you have all this stuff down here. It's real. SubhanAllah. We're gonna take our shoes off. This is a halal house. <laughs> SubhanAllah. So much. Whoa! Quran! We made every living thing from water. Yeah. And guess what? Yep, we got the Quran. But look, behind him, look, there's a cave and he was chilling here reading the Quran. You see? It's a pretty crazy place. Look at these guys. This is the Qibla right here. And you can pray over here. And this is the Quran. Wow. So, Allah I really like Ottoman style now. I didn't like it, but I like Ottoman style now. Oh, nice living room. Very spacious. <laughs> got the tespih, we got the prayer rats, we got the Quran. I mean, he was on point. This is amazing. I mean, this is what I want my house to be like. But I don't have a location like this. Yano's house. Do you hear me, my wife? Yano's house. Mm -hmm. She's not very happy about it, but I think I can pull something like this. At least I want a couch like this and I want a small praying room. I've got the Quran right here, bro. Right here. Whoa. You've got the the Bosniak version. Mariam. Gospodarom moj kosti sam jorem i glava osigrala nikam ani sam. That's ex that's my favorite shot, yeah. Oh, check it out guys, that's the cave, this is amazing, look at it. Oh. Oh. Look at the cave, it's really cool. 
people have realized that I really love Ottoman architecture. I know they brought some bida and some practices into the Dean, which were not great, but this house, which you can see behind me, is beautiful. And the architecture of the mosques, I think they are the most beautiful. Also the houses. Another one flowing just right beneath my feet. Just rivers on rivers. Just like in Jenna, you have rivers beneath your beneath your feet will rivers flow in Jenna, just like here. Check it out guys. Last two days in Bosnia. Kind of sad, excited, mixed feelings about going back to Prague because I have a lot of things on my mind moving back to Slovakia, changing a lot of things. Look how beautiful this is. SubhanAllah. If, if the dunya is so beautiful, if the dunya is like this, can you imagine what will the Jenna look like? SubhanAllah. Check how the beautiful river is. In the house. Got the birds flying. I think these are like not birds, but uh, we always seek for beauty in this world. Look at a beautiful house, a beautiful place where you see water, you see a lake, you see a sea, you see a nice mountain, and it's always like, man, that's beautiful. And that's like an instinct we have because, like. Why would this be beautiful? Like, there's no reason for an aesthetic beauty if God doesn't exist, if there's no, like, point into it. Because, like, if this is just random, then what is beautiful about it? Like, what? what why do we see beauty? Why do we see art? You know? As I was saying, I have a lot on my mind, especially with the Slovak Dawa, which is not going well, to be honest. We have a lot of fitna in our small, small circle so so that's something I'm working on I'm also working on my own Dean implementing new things in my own Dean staying away from Shaitan from my own desires which is a forever battle then we're going to Istanbul but also I'm buying this land it's almost finished but that's kind of the next step so it's kind of a lot of Changes happening and I feel especially through Ramadan I felt kind of weirded out because just hanging on to Ramadan is so difficult just being present and you know forgetting about dunya when your dunya is changing so much you know man I just hope I don't know I just hope that I'm gonna get through this this trip was definitely Great. life changing I would say yeah definitely different than what I expected in a good way and you know I have respect for Bosnian people and I've learned many things here and something it's something I'd like to try again in some new country um, but Bosnians are the closest to me because language culture ethnicity yeah it's just perfect so i don't think i can find another muslim country like this oh, today is the last day in bosnia in mostar i'm on the bridge check out the dog behind me just chilling out yesterday he was here in the middle of the bridge so this bridge wasn't here destroyed during the war look at this dog so cute but uh, kind of sad because I know that I have a big there's a lot of things waiting for me back home especially when it comes to Islam because I had an idea to establish uh, an organization Tawheed which would help people help new converts with Islam but also do, them, do some local Dawah but that dream is being shattered because there's a big Fitna, but also a big disconnect amongst us Muslims in Slovakia and sectarianism. It's 
so it's uh, it's impossible to collaborate with some people who don't see some you know who are it's impossible to collaborate with someone who rejects let's say the sunna or someone who rejects something else basically not enough normal people so i'm kind of stuck in between thinking of well what to do because i'm not a scholar i'm not gonna teach islam but we have some basic things which, which we can teach um, and then do the dawah so i was seriously thinking looking even at the dawah in the us or the uk i've noticed that many people when they they want to form alliances and coalitions but you end up sacrificing some of the day you know like look at what happens with the Yakin Institute and let's say Omar Suleiman and then you had Daniel Kachu and he started his own thing because he didn't agree with the liberal let's say agenda or whatever you want to call it of the Institute or their interpretation of the Quran and the Sunnah and this is we have to be very careful we have these organizations who are interpreting these things so that fit, so that it fits the government it fits the agenda but then you have the real Quran and Sunnah and then you have let's say all these things like Sufism and all that which are also Muslims but they take it in their own way and it's like well which Islam is the correct one you know for me it was hard to figure out and I still haven't figured it out fully which Islam is the best to follow because there's everybody tells you there is the best so I mean obviously you gotta look at the first like what did the Prophet do? And that type of Islam is just the Quran and Sunnah and the early Salaf, like that's easy. But also look at the context where you are. You're not living in Saudi Arabia, you're not living in Muslim land, you live in Slovakia, you're surrounded by non-Muslims. So obviously some of the rulings are not applicable because they require a Muslim government or, or you would you know harm yourself but you have to be careful to to weigh pros and cons because you can't just you know disregard the ruling because it doesn't fit you in your current circumstances you know bring together the ummah and in the Czech and Slovakia the scholars the mosques the leaders but it's impossible even in that small thing everybody has a different interpretation of Islam everybody I don't care who you are you disagree with me on something i'm pretty sure how do we bridge this gap well let's agree on the basics but if we can't even agree on the basics five pillars six ah that's a problem then right so i think unfortunately here we don't have a, a scholars or muftis or people with knowledge who we can turn to and if we have them they are not from our context they don't really matter that much because their fatwas are irrelevant for us so i'm kind of i think we're kind of stuck where we do realize that you know allah exists and muhammad sallallahu is the last messenger and then it's up to you it's up to you it's impossible to educate unless i can give you some grounds we can help you with some basics but subhanallah only the strong survives and that's it that's the unfortunate situation and, um, i always have the dreams of saving the ummah or whatever bringing this farm to slovaks but i think it's kind of impossible task uh, besides just the regular dawa and i'm not sure where my place is because i'm still learning a lot and <clears throat> you know kind of a very chaotic uh, chaotic moments for me so this is also kind of like emotional for me to leave Bosnia because I'm happy here I'm happy here but I also see big problems here because people have forgotten about their purpose people have forgotten about Islam here it's not many people who practice and if you don't practice Islam here you're not a Muslim right what benefit do you have then? I don't, know, I don't know what's my future whether I need to do hijrah whether I'm gonna stay there forever only Allah knows but for now I'm gonna try I'm gonna stay I'm gonna try with all I have right now which is just here 
and something of Islam. Not much, but I've got something. And I know something and I can share that. If we're unable to collaborate together as Muslims, then that's the problem. I just hope it's gonna change. But we'll see with time. And I'm not gonna stress that too much over that because I don't actually control the outcome. I don't control anything. I just I can make the effort. And we'll see where it goes. Alright guys. That's me signing off from Mostar. Look at the the beautiful mosque behind me. Nice. Should be a done very soon. This is what's, what I'm gonna miss because we, I'm not gonna have seen I'm not gonna see in Slovakia or Czech. I mean you don't really need that but it gives you this Islamic vibe that I'm gonna miss. Salam alaikum guys and I'll see you inshallah in the next video. Last minute in Mostar and we just stopped by to this view.